today I came to the space where the king cobra is held and we found blood inside that area, kind of like a trail. So obviously that's a little strange. Looking closer at her, I was able to see some blood on her cloaca, which is the vent where reproduction happens and feces are excreted. So we're gonna have a vet come in, uh, make sure that things aren't getting any worse. Hello. Hello. Hey, Susie. Hi. Ready for Cobra? I am. All right. Sam, you ready? When dealing with medical issues with venomous snakes, it's hardly ever really simple because inevitably you have to get the snake restrained in some way. And with a king cobra, uh, it's a very potentially dangerous snake, so it's not really simple. Ready? I'm ready. Doors open. I'm just trying to stay focused on what the snake is doing. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out where the snake wants to go, reading that snake's behavior. Yep, she's going in. Just trying to make it as easy going as possible for both of us. Okay. You nice. good? Yep. Uh, we're just gonna tube her real quick. We need to use a clear capture tube to be able to restrain her body where you're gonna be putting yourself in harm's way and then another person holds the rest of her body so that the vet can look her over and give her a good look through. Susie, you ready? Okay. How's she looking? Yeah, it's scabbing. The red irritated tissue that I can see in her cloaca is making me think that she has um, some sort of inflammatory or infectious condition that's going on. I'm gonna put some topical antibacterial antifungal steroid to try to decrease any inflammation in that. Yeah. Like that. No, sorry, honey. <laughs> it's possible there's a bacteria that's infecting the tissue. So we're gonna wanna bring her to the clinic so that we can anesthetize her and get a better idea of what's going on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, let's see what we got. There she goes. Okay. Huh. That looks angry. Go ahead to start. Susan. Yes, please. Yeah, five. Yeah. We keep hands on her while she's under anesthesia because anesthesia could wear off. Um, it could not be strong enough. So if she does start to wake up, we don't want the vets to be in a situation where they're in danger. It does seem to be like the rim of this gland. Yeah, but it's just the one side, not the other side. Yeah. And I can see that it's actually one of her scent glands that is irritated and ulcerated, potentially infected. Putting in the pump certainly will help deliver antibiotic constantly. Try to have antibiotic on board. Then it really is just weekly handling. We wouldn't have to be fussing with every three days. What do you think? All right. Yeah. yeah. With an infection like this, we'd have to catch up the snake every three to five days in order to give antibiotics. But considering this is a large, venomous, potentially really dangerous snake, we'd want to avoid that. The use of an osmotic pump is more on the cutting edge of a medical treatment. As the pump sits inside the snake, underneath the skin, fluid from the snake is going to penetrate into the pump, and that will cause an increased pressure in the pump, which will then cause medications to be delivered through a port in the top of the pump. And hopefully keep the bacteria in check. Yeah, that's her heart. That's a good strong beat, huh? Okay, knee bowl, I'm gonna start cutting. I'm gonna close this in a couple sutures and be done. Okay. 
put her in the tube, yeah. We can take the ET tube out. Come on, you. Time to wake up. The thing that makes it a little different than a mammal procedure is king cobras or reptiles in general can hold their breath. So you just have to be patient and wait for the snake to wake up. There you go. Yeah. There she is. She's like five more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> she just hit the snooze button. Let's put this fear noodle back, huh? The pump will last about 40 to 50 days. I'm hoping that over the course of the next few weeks that she will improve. Thank you. Thanks, Susie. about a week since we've done that procedure. And the pump has stayed in. There's been no issues with the skin surrounding that. She's feeding. She's acting very normal. So we're pleased with that whole thing. I'm hoping to see maybe some scabbing. I don't want to see any bleeding. Right there. That doesn't look terrible. You know, I don't see any. It's not as red around the vent either. No. Oh, that looks good. Scab there, but looking at the cloaca, I'm pleased. Really, almost all of the redness is gone. Make sure that our incision site looks good, which it does. Pump looks good. Mm -hmm. So, looking at our pump surgical site, things look great. We are done. The sutures are holding. Um, there's no discharge or swelling, so I'm pleased with how she looks. I'm gonna step out, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Just be ready, she comes out quick sometimes. You never want your animal to be injured or not feeling well. She was one of the first venomous snakes that I worked with. Mm -hmm, sneaky snake. She's a great snake. I'm just happy when everything's fine. She's uh, feisty and active, um, so I think she's doing well. There we go. She Good knows home, huh? Oh, yeah. It's great that we were able to use an antibiotic pump in this. I'm glad that she responded so well. The pump will stay in for a few weeks before we remove it. And by the next breeding season, we expect she'll be fully recovered and there won't be any sign of infection. All right. Good job. Good job, guys.